Hello and welcome also from my side to this Open SAP course for Agile project delivery with Focus Build. My name is Christina Pickard and I'm working as a senior support engineer and product manager on testing for Focus Build. So welcome to week four, which is all about test management. And with this, you have achieved already the middle of this course. So congratulations to that. Let me kick off this week with unit one, introduction to test management. So looking at the overall process flow for focused build, we will now focus on the activity of you as a test manager. So your primary objective is to prepare and plan and to control the execution of tests within your project. And this will be supported by focus build features and functions. So when we concentrate on the tasks of you being responsible for planning, controlling and monitoring the tests, you might wonder how that is supported by the SAP Solution Manager and Focus Build. So we are focusing on the typical project deliverables that might be test cases or test scripts, later on the test documentation, the test reporting, monitoring and um, yeah, the test execution and the error handling. So you normally start one more time from the overall launchpad of Solution Manager. And this gives you access to the different functionalities. That means you're utilizing the tool, especially for all the test activities from the beginning to the end. The primary objective and the outcome of your activities will be artifacts like test plans in the, test, in the solution manager. And based on your concept for test execution in your projects, you might have the different test types single functional tests, acceptance tests, down to functional integration tests and regression tests. And yeah, all of this are supported by functions and features of Focus Build. Let me summarize shortly the main capabilities of SAP Solution Manager for testing and um, what Focus Build brings on top of that. So at the bottom of the screen, you will find the classic SAP Solution Manager test suite with all the uh, functionalities like uh, the solution documentation where we typically store the test cases, manual and automatic ones. We have still the test automation framework here in place to integrate third-party test tools to run test automation if this is a uh, topic for you in future. We have the change impact analysis in place which um, provides you a proposal for your regression test scope. We have um, Applications for test planning, for example, how um, to, that supports you to pick the right test cases for your test plan. And um, we have tools to um, support you by doing the test system setup and as well as for the test execution phase. So for the tester, there's a specific tool to run through the test cases. And of course, for you as a test manager, it's important to run some reportings to see directly what's going on with your test plans. So on top of that, we have something that we delivered with Focused Build, which is more focusing on projects and the requirements and the work packages. For example, a tool which helps you to create test plans based on the work packages. And also the Test Suite dashboard um, provides you a good overview about what's going on for your testing of your project. What we provide as well is a new test case type for manual testing, which we call test steps, which is an embedded functionality where you are describing all of your steps. So you can define, for, for example, as well, if you need to provide evidence step by step or um, what is the description of the step, what is the expected result of the step, and so on and so forth. So, so you have really a step-by-step -step description of your test case, but embedded directly inside of um, the Solution Manager and not in form of a Word document or an Excel document. And what we also provide is a simple test execution tool for the tester, which we call um, my test executions, which you will see also later inside of this week. So let us quickly go through the um, test management work streams. So we are starting with the test preparation phase, which means 
We assume that you are doing the um, solution documentation so that you have set up this, that you have created already your project, that you have created your requirements and work packages. And um, based on that, um, you should provide, provide also test cases. This test cases needs to be stored inside of the solution documentation. So you can create it directly there, or if you have it already at SharePoint or some other place, you can simply also assign this test cases to the process steps. And finally, you can assign this test cases to the work packages. So the next point inside of this um, work or this next work stream is about the test planning. So you have to check, first of all, if you have um, test cases already available for your work packages, otherwise you cannot use them inside of the test plans. So you are generating directly on that scope your um, test plans and you get some test packages out of it. You So at the end, you just need to assign the testers to the right test packages. And if the test planning is already done, then we switch over to the test execution phase, which means the tester is going to his tester work list and do the things that they have to do. So they are going through the described steps. Yeah. So, um, and finally, the tester have to document the result, which means he have to set a status. Yeah. If it is, in, if this, test case was run successful or if there are still errors available which needs to be solved and um, if this is the case the tester is um, able to create defects and for these defects the developer has um, to run a defect analysis to find out what is the root cause and in case the developer needs to provide a fix he can use the defect correction for this. So, and if the defect correction is available inside of the test system, the tester can run a defect and hopefully then everything is going well and smooth and the tester can set the test status to OK. So, in parallel of the test execution and also afterwards, different types of analytics can be run. Yeah, For example, to see what the test status is, what the test progress is, um, and maybe at the end of such a test execution phase, a test report should be created and stored somewhere in the archive. Let us take a look inside of an example build project for agile development of a single release. So as you can see here at the uh, top, you see directly the phases of the release cycle. So inside of the prepare phase, we have typically some waves and sprints available. And when we are going down to the sprint, so during the sprint, typically the development and the configuration should be done. And um, inside of the sprints, we have our work items available. And for the work items, typically we are running unit tests. Due to the reason that the unit test is mainly done by the developer, we are not using things like test plans or test packages or something like that. So just the developer is running through his development or his through his um, configuration and check if everything is working well. So if we are going one step up, um, we see on the wave level that we are typically running at the end of each sprint a so-called um, single functional tests to find out if the functionality is given. And at the end of a wave, we are typically doing an acceptance test. The acceptance test is also mainly done by the key users or the end user you which have um, requested the requirement or have, which have created a requirement and requested a functionality. So this is one of the most important tests and this is also one of the bigger tests which we are typically doing. And um, after our waves, we are handing over the configuration and the development um, to the pre-production system where we are doing another big test, which is our functional integration test, where we are typically verifying our end-to-end -end scenarios, the most important end-to-end -end scenarios. And if requested, we can also run a regression test on the pre-production system.
So let us quickly go through the different uh, testing types. So we distinguish between required testing types and optional testing types. So for required testing types, we have the unit test here available, which is on sprint level, as I have said, um, typically done on the work item or on the definition of the technical design. So this is also done in the QAS system and mostly done by the developer or the consultant who has done the development or the configuration to ensure that um, this was implemented correctly. Then one of our most important tests is the um, business acceptance test, which is typically done on the wave level for the work package and also for the requirements. So it could be that uh, you have created for one requirement several work packages, and then this acceptance test should be run for the requirement over several work packages to um, yeah, validate that a requested functionality is working correctly. And this needs to be validated by the requester. So in the requester, as mentioned before, could be end user or end business user. So then we switch to the pre-production system where we are doing our functional integration tests. So we need to ensure that our most important end-to-end -end tests are running well. And finally, also the regression test is an, an required test to find out if our productive processes that we had also before, that they are still doing their work and they are still working correctly. Then we have optional testing types. One of them is a single functional test. Um, even if it is an optional testing type, we still highly recommend to do a single functional test on um, the single work package level to ensure that the business function that was um, requested is implemented correctly inside of the quality assurance system. Then we have what, what is also an optional thing is an early functional integration test and an early regression test. So as you know, if you have handed over um, the, the information, the development and the configuration to the pre-production system, there's no way back. Yeah? So therefore, sometimes it makes sense to do early functional integration tests and regression tests to find errors and defects in an earlier stage to make the correction much easier than it when it is um, in the late um, at the later point of the project. And uh, finally, what we can recommend to you to do is to run this check report, which is not a big deal for the test manager. So what he has to do is to go to his um, solution manager launchpad. And there he would find a tile for the check report. With the check report, you can run checks regarding the general things of your project, the project relationship in terms of testing, what is the waves about, and so on and so forth. And with this, you can also run a test suite checks, which is a basic check of your activation of ICF services, the customizing of the test suite, and some minor checks regarding your user. So it's really easy to run this. It takes just some seconds and um, it is a good preparation to start with test management and focus build inside of your solution manager. With this, we are at the end of the presentation today. So um, I hope you get a good insight and a good start for test management and for this week. So. Have a good rest of the day and see you in a later unit. Bye-bye.